Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I'm trying to start my own tech company. If you're new here, I'm building a productivity app that's also a video game. And if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, go ahead and click the top link in my description to sign up for my mailing list, and I'll shoot you an email as soon as the beta version of my app is available for testing. Earlier this week, I shared the project with my friend David to test the user signup experience, and was secretly hoping for some positive feedback about the rest of the app. But things didn't really go how I hoped. David was confused because the image preview that was automatically generated when I shared the link to my app didn't match his expectations. And this image preview is called an OG image, which is short for open graph image, and comes from the meta tags included at the head of the web page and allows developers to control how their content is displayed on social networks. When you share a link on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Discord, or others that support the open graph protocol, the social network scans the web page for these OG tags. If an OG image is included, then that image will be displayed as the thumbnail in the post, along with the title and description if those tags are also present. My website was still using the default OG image that came included with the template that I started from, and I thought that changing this was a small task that I could put off until I was ready to launch. But this interaction with my friend David made me realize that unless I prioritized the user experience, even in beta, I was gonna have a hard time getting anyone to use my app. And it didn't stop there. When my friend David went to sign up, this is the email he got. Now, I know that I'm using Supabase as the back end for my project, but David didn't. And a small amount of branding here would have gone a long way to establish trust. The reason that I didn't fix either of these issues yet was because I didn't have a perfect solution. I thought that after I finished the first version of my app, I would refine the user onboarding experience, but I couldn't even get my friend to test the app because it didn't look legitimate. Now, I still don't know what a perfect OG image or onboarding email template is, but I do know that it only took me 10 minutes to switch out the OG image with a screenshot of my site and add my site's title to the default email template. And what I learned from this experience is that even a temporary solution is better than the default experience. I shouldn't wait until I have a perfect solution to fix problems. I should fix what I can when I can and tackle this mountain of work one small task at a time. The work that I was planning on doing this week was implementing a major system in the video game that's connected to my productivity app, but seeing how important these small changes were, I looked for some other small tasks that could improve the user experience. Another small but important part of my site is a Chrome extension that blocks social media while you're using my app. And in some previous update, I had broken the extension for Instagram. And I hate to admit it, but several times over the past couple weeks, I have caught myself getting stuck browsing Instagram Reels and even YouTube Shorts. So since I was already focusing on user experience, this seemed like a good time to fix the extension and hopefully improve my productivity. The Instagram bug stemmed from changing the subdomain of Instagram in the matches array in the extensions manifest. I'm honestly not sure why this matters, but changing it fixed the bug. So if you know why, drop a comment, let me know. Blocking YouTube shorts turned out to be much more difficult. I learned that as you browse YouTube, it doesn't actually perform a full page refresh. This meant that going directly to the YouTube shorts feed would be blocked because it does run the extension's content JS script on page load. However, navigating to the shorts feed from any other page of YouTube wouldn't block the shorts. So to fix this, I needed to add an event listener to the document for the YT navigate finished event that YouTube emits when navigation is finished. So once that's set up, shorts are blocked and my productivity is saved. That's pretty much everything that I worked on this week. And if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you have another couple seconds, it'd be awesome if you were to leave a comment and let me know what you thought or hit the like button. But if not, no worries, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.